Hello there, and welcome to episode 6 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six. I'm Icon, and our topic for this episode will be the services menu for our population and adding in a new and a little bit more complicated service, the flat houses. We're going to have some minor topics in between regarding the production of the fabrics and other things that I'm not thinking about yet, and we're going to have some fun with that. In between the last episode and this one i have finished building up the charcoaler so we are producing now our own coal and therefore i stopped importing it and i stopped exporting leather so our trade slots right now are just dormant we can go for some new exports as soon as the time is near what i'll be doing for now because i don't like to have export slots unused we're going to get over and export furniture. Furniture is quite cool because it's a product that you really, really need quite desperately. And we're only going to export 10% of our stock. That's only going to happen when our stockpiles are really full already. So just that this thing is not unused at all. This will bring us I don't know, all 10 years or such a nice boost of income, but beyond that, not much will happen with that. Okay, let's get into our actual topics. First off, I want to introduce the production of the necessary materials for the flat houses as well as the actual research for these. So, flat houses are found here in the services tab. So, 100 tech points for that, and let's see. Do I already have the weaver unlocked? I might assume so. Okay, so let's see. We're searching, and here we have the weaver. The weaver will produce fabric out of cotton, as we aren't too surprised to see here. So, cotton. I have already set up a little uh, plucking operation, if I remember correctly. So, we're going to set up a farm... ASAP alongside with that. We're also going to get a get in a small farm here, just like I did with the uh, cotton. This is just to get the ball rolling for us. Once we have that done, we're going to set up larger fields. But for now, just small fields. Our workforce is limited, to, so that's a nice thing to go for. Let's pick up some more immigrants because we're going to need more workforce anyways. And let's contemplate where we're going to put up the weaver. I mean, cotton will be always produced more in that direction, whereas our processing will be happening always in that direction. So let's get one more time into the fertility overlay, and we see that this direction here is really no fertile ground. That's good, because we're just going to set up our, our weavers around here. I think this is a nice opportunity to cut our transportation ways short and we have to get there anyways so let's set up shop here and just as usual we're going to build a little bit larger than necessary and there has been a lot of cool comments in between so thanks for that and i'm going to introduce a couple of things that i've learned from you guys so first off we're going to set up another loom just for just like we did it before for five people so the last couple of times i have wait a sec last couple of times i have set up these rooms with the pillars in the center first but there has been this really cool comment that said, come on, man, just place down your, your pillars later. And that's actually one of the smartest things that I've seen somebody coming up with. So, I don't know, is this now inaccessible? It does look like it's inaccessible, though. Let's put it down like that. Now it's for sure not inaccessible anymore. So, there we go. So we're going to need now auxiliary loom, the usual things, you know. And we're going to keep it expandable, of course. So 17 metal short. So we are, we are in desperate need of creating our own metal. 
So we got to import metal yet again. Sadly, my money is rather on the low side. So, well, I was hoping that I wouldn't be needing to export my leather like that. But that's a cool thing. As you see here, it saved the configurations I had on the leather. And the game does know that on furniture, I would like to have a different setting. That's, that's next level. I don't know many games that are this smart. Anywho. So we're going to have some working uh, done in the meantime, and I also wanted to point out that the janitors, you know, when you mouse over these guys, you see that there's a lot of red dot dots around, and the janitor can't work because he's missing resources. This has been pointed out in the comments section, I wanted to repeat it here. The thing is, to repair structures properly, you will need the necessary materials that were needed to build that building. And as you see here, we have no metal here right now in our stockpiles. That's a bad thing, but we're going to fix that rather soon. Okay, so while we're waiting for different things to happen, we're going to get uh, now into the, into the main part of today's episode. So first off, I want to explain this little thing here. This is basically the, the total sum of things that influence the hap happiness and the loyalty of your population. It's basically the, the total meter of the fulfillment of your, call, of your city. Basically, if that would be all at 100%, you'd, you'd be successfully running a utopia. Congratulations. Pretty hard to do that, though. Don't know if that's even possible. So all of these sections here are different um, different uh, well sectors of your fulfillment so to say so today we're going to look at into the service sector and after we've been through that i'm pretty sure you will find it a lot easier to understand how all these work but we're going to go through these in the course of the series more often now enough of the talk so as you see here, we have 8.23 points of 21.5 21 points already fulfilled. That means we could gain that much more happiness in the city by providing enough services. Pretty high chance of improvement here everywhere if you look at all the other meters that have basically the same meaning. I've already pointed out that these things are just the trends, how things have developed over the course of time. And... Over here is the real interesting part. So first off, we see here how much um, service is provided and how it distributes. So eating services, for example, we have meals via the eateries and we have no meals via canteens. And as you see here, the meters uh, between the canteen and the eatery are different sized. What does that mean in detail? I think the game tries to emphasize here at this point that people will be happier the more high quality eating opportunities are available. If you just stack up more and more low quality eating opportunities that won't make the majority of people happy. So the same goes for the sleeping services. We have here right now beds, those come from dormitories, and we have a pretty high fulfillment on that meter. And the other thing are apartments. As you see here, apartments are what people would actually prefer. Those are just a thing that, well, we're going to use it if we must. And you see that as something repeating quite often in the other areas. So hygiene services, people would be always preferring the bath over the well and so on and so forth. If any of these meters is at 100%, you don't need to build any extra extra um, service opportunities of that stuff. So that means our city could use some extra dormitory and some extra eatery already. But due to the fact that we'd only gain, for example, your 10% more fulfillment, there's a high chance that we'd be actually gaining less than what we're paying with that uh, action. So this way you can discern whether it's going to be worth it to invest into a new service or not. So a good opportunity here is stages. As you see here, we definitely could have way more fulfillment due to stages, if you mouse over, you see also in the 
bottommost section that current fulfillment that's right above the meters 0.98 or 1.5 that's also a, an information of how many points can be generated by one of these areas so baths could provide 2.5 of these 21.5 points and so on and so forth i think you get the idea so uh, the neat thing here is that these things are using the, the same the same system so you now should be able to understand the other screens a bit better but they are not the same at many of these things you can't even configure something just like here so here for example not only is this an informational tab you can also configure whether or not the species in your city should have access to what so I could here also easily cancel out the access of humans to wells or baths or whatever. These little check marks here give you the option to exclude or include things. We're also going to include chambers here for the sake of uh, luxury. I'm not sure if I'm going to provide chambers for anybody else than the nobility, but as you see here, this is how it works. All the other screens have different things you can go for, and we're going to cover them when the episode is fitting for that. So here, as we see there, we could here gain a lot by providing alcohol, which is something I'm planning to do in the in the upcoming episodes, and we could gain a lot by providing baths, which is absolutely not an option as of yet, because we don't have any cut stone available and apartments as you see here that's the next thing we're going for and there'd be also canteens but i don't want to build a canteen yet mainly because canteens need a very very high investment of coal over a longer period of time and i don't feel like going for that also i thought like it would be a nice opportunity to show you guys how all of these things actually work so now let's enable fabric here because you know we're going to need to store that stuff and as you see here that warehouse is already uh, mostly mostly allocated and let's see we're going to wait until the metal here is in so the janitor can repair the, the other things you you can notice that things get a little bit gritty and dirty here if they wear down so here we already see a couple of problems. My wood income is my wood is empty right now, so let's uh, chop some trees, and I'm going to go a little bit more into detail here. So the charcoaler is consuming more wood per year than the woodcutter can provide per year. That's just the entire entirety of the problem. So for now, I'm not going to expand the woodcutter. I could, but I personally will prefer to keep the odd jobbers busy and keep the stockpiles high this way. I'm, I feel like odd jobbers right now are a little bit too powerful, but yeah, you know, early access shenanigans, I'm not taking that too seriously. So money's coming in and our cotton farms are working hard. So, let's have a look at the flat houses while we're waiting for the fabrics to be co to be constructed, well, made, of course. So, now we have access to the flat house. The flat house needs wood, furniture, and fabrics. The flat house is also the first building that does mind noise. Uh, noise. So, as you see here, not every building is generating noise. Basically, all of the artisans' uh, buildings produce noise. Wherever you refine something or the like, or you produce some basic materials, noise is being produced. Warehouses don't make any noise, but the, the gist of it is quite simple. People don't like to have noisy living areas, and you should better, you're better off respecting that. So we're going to build our first flat house over here and as you already see i'm not going small here no -uh. that's mainly because i really really dislike wasting room in flat houses because you you have to put up all the apartments manually as you see here and there is also a lot of a a lot of maintenance necessary there so 
Okay, let's see. I want to leave a little bit more of a corridor open so I can set up the, the maintenance pillars accordingly. And I also don't want to overcrowd the building too hard because otherwise we'll be suffering resource-wise. As you see here, this is a real huge project and my city is most likely not able to stamp that. So we're going to small to sm make that smaller. And I just wanted to showcase here how and in what dimensions you're you're going to plan in the in the later stages of the game. For today, well, I would have loved to build a big bad flat house, but well, let's let's stay realistic and build things in a size that we can't afford. So more like something like that. So there we go. Support pillars are set up and some knickknacks and carpets to make the whole apartment thingy nicer. You see here, the apartments have a coziness rating, and the coziness rating is basically the same as the efficiency rating on your, on your, uh, your, what's it called again, uh, your uh, workshops. The more you have of this, the better is the sleep quality and the happier your people are with that. And you see also a smaller one of these things is quite the investment. Where there's one thing left to do and that's adding in some doors and let's go. So I would have loved to build that huge thing that I've showed you but well, usually I personally like to think that the more well, the larger you're building the better the more you can afford there the better because it's quite simple that you need to keep those things running but i always feel like the effort to build a new building is much much higher than just uh, keeping the the building intact and another thing here you see the janitors they have a uh, limited area and there is another real iffy thing about them. I don't know why, but the moment they miss a resource, I have the impression as if they are stuck and not working, not working good anymore. I don't know if I'm right about that or if that is just an impression of mine, but it uh, it certainly felt a lot like that. I'd love to have some feedback on that assumption. I'm not sure about it. So we're finishing off that uh, workshop quite soon. Let's fast forward the time because right now we're just waiting on money, you know. Money and metal imports. But, you know, there we go. Oh, we're, we, we got the metal now, but we ain't got the stone. That's something I can change. So there we go. Meanwhile, our dudes are also killing it on the flat house. And we're setting up the, the Weaver's workshop. Nice. So. Of course, there is no progress happening as long as we don't have any fabrics for that thing. But henceforth, we're producing fabrics. As usual, don't trust the auto employ. Go for the amount of workers that you know that are going to be needed. So here we finally go. Stuff's working out just fine. We gotta see how much production of cotton we'll get there. We're very soon going to upgrade our production of cotton and grain because I really think we're underproducing heavily there, but, you know, we gotta solve one problem at a time. Alrighty, so we ain't good enough. Nothing. So we're going to close that. So, production wise, our weavers are quite a fast bunch. So we get that done decently now. 
and now we have our flat house done so let's check it out first off you see that they have a necessity of employees that's a big difference between the dormitories and the uh, flat houses and they also have a certain amount of capacity of course but that that's not the big surprise here what is something you should be worried about is the amount of employees in there and that's also a nice reason to have them as large as possible because you know it's quite annoying when your flat house has a necessity of 2.2 workers and you're putting three workers in you're basically wasting the workforce of 0.8 people so to say and that's something that's really bothering me a lot okay we obviously also need more janitors this place is going to not look good here okay but the janitors don't mess don't lack any resources anymore and now you see they're roaming around and repairing stuff okay but let's see what has happened here in the services tab so when you go check it out now you see that the amount of apartment fulfillment is rising and it's quite steadily rising when we fast forward the game a tad bit so as you see here there's still a lot more capacity open but as soon as we have built these there's already an influx of more people available for our city so that's just what these services do they provide more and more attractiveness for your city and beyond that i'm just noticing that we're needing really more services also in terms of dormitories so a word about dormitories i really love to have dormitories wherever a lot of people are working because you know when your people working are dead tired it's always better when they have a place where they can lie down to sleep rather than not having this place to lie down and sleep but whenever you can try to avoid these budget wise because nobody prefers dormitories over flat houses except for your workforce or your resource stockpiles but they don't really have a say in that what i'm trying to emphasize here is that quality matters in terms of your rest sites and the better they are the happier your people will be and also my personal attempt is always to spread my services out in a way that it's not clumped up together like for example my next uh, lavatory let's see let's, let's, would be more like in this direction just like my next eatery so the workers from the fields have some place where they can go to eat i'm not exactly sure if these distributions matter that much but i i do think so because the game the, the people in the game ha are all fully simulated and they all have their their uh, catalog of needs so to say and the longer they need to walk for something like that the worse they, heck, they might even die when they're taking too long to reach a body of water to cool down in the summer. Or a warm place in the winter, in terms of freezing, looking at the hearth here. So, I feel like distributing services throughout the town is way to go, but I'm all ears to hear your um, approach to that. So, as we see here now, the degradation of our, uh, of our stuff is lowering, but also the janitors here are not cutting these areas anymore. So, we're definitely going to need to set up another janitor, especially for the fisher, for the fishing place. But I'm not sure yet where I'm going to place that thing down. So. We set up another dormitory, and let's check out what impact that had on the services tab. So as you see here, people are not necessarily happier. That's uh, something that I've already uh, noticed, that as soon as there are flat houses versus dormitories, 
people will only begin migrating towards my city again as soon as we have a nice influx of dormitories and not uh, a, a nice influx of flat houses and not dormitories. That's just how it goes. So we're going to upgrade our our workshop here a tad bit, but obviously we can't. We can't add in more than one bench. Jeez, that's horrible. But whatever, we're we're going to take whatever we we can because I need more. Uh, I need more uh, carpenters. I need more furniture. Because what we're going to do is quite obvious. We're going to build more flat houses here to attract more people. And beyond that, I mean, there's the option to to build more stages. And we have several other methods that we can go for. In the early game, I'd always suggest that you'd go for other methods of, uh, of increasing the attractivity of your city instead of trying to max out these slots. Like optimizing these slots, that's something you can do later down the road. No biggie. Let's cut down the employees of the janitor. You can't always optimize these uh, these numbers later, but providing a basic um, coverage of these needs is yielding, in my humble opinion, a very, very high return. For example, building another stage now would make the people kind of happy, but I'm not even entirely sure that I'd get more than the four people in that need to work there. So always be careful with these things. Always be careful. You can you can really kneecap yourself without any uh, without any bigger benefit. For now, I'm pretty sure that we are going to need yet another flat house. And as long as my resources are low as they are, I'm not going to build larger buildings yet. Emphasizing that yet quite hard because I really want more than that. But right now I'm bottlenecked with cotton, with, with textiles, uh, no, textiles, with furniture. This whole place already needs more furniture than I'm possibly uh, providing here right now. And this uh, this hopefully gives you some perspective about the proportions of this game. Like many things in this game are, right now, I'm building way too small. The further you get down the road with this game, the large, uh, larger the scales of building your stuff will get. But we'll we'll begin there. For for now, it's okay that we're going to bid, build up this little flat house here. I just hope that our Carpenters will one day produce enough furniture to get the job done. We might as well consider importing some furniture for a while, for the time being. There's always no shame in importing whatever you need at the time being. So... That's what these systems are good for, in my humble opinion. But we're going to need to set up some real economy as soon as possible, because as you see here, we're starting to we're, we're starting to be more and more hungry in terms of different uh, services, and at the same time, our workforces are not growing at the at the same pace as our consumption of goods is growing. So. We gotta make ourselves work. We, we gotta work on that. And for the next episode, I'm not exactly sure where I'm headed in the next episode yet because it's a very, it's a very wide branching path. To some degree, I am very, very intrigued to go into mining next and get myself into stone cutting. But I think I'm going to, I'm going to skip that. A certain part of me is going to produce, uh, wants to produce alcohol in the next episode. We'll see about that. So feel free to drop me a comment down below if you want to know or if you have any topics that you want to see covered in the next time. Okay, friends. So I think that's that for this episode. 
let's see what kind of topic uh, we'll find for the next one. So, drop me your comments down below, leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and of course, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. There's daily content coming up here, and I'd love to have you guys. And before I stop recording this once more, thanks so much for all your great comments and helpful things. I've already learned a lot more about this game since I started this series, and what could be more fun. Okay, so have a good one and see you guys next time.